Este video de seguridad fue preparado y traído a usted por el Fondo de Compensación de la Asociación Kansas Livestock. Accidentes ocurren todos los días. Cada 10 segundos, dos personas son heridas al realizar su trabajo. Las granjas de engorde no son la excepción. Una gran variedad de peligros se pueden presentar en diferentes áreas en las granjas de engorde. Por ende, mantenerse seguro en todo momento es crucial. Por cada lección mayor, hay 100 lecciones menores aproximadamente 500 accidentes y miles de comportamientos no seguros. La clave para evitar accidentes es reconocer que comportamientos que no son seguros son la causa de la mayoría de lesiones. Reconozca y reduzca la frecuencia de estos comportamientos y usted dramáticamente reducirá las heridas. Yeah, basically it started out like any other day that time of year in July. You know, it was hot. Everybody had started early, probably about five o'clock in the morning, as I recall, in order to get to get done earlier, and uh, the day was normal. But Rana never really talked about um, the dangers, I guess, of his job being on horseback. He was just, it was second nature to him. I mean, he grew up on horseback, and it was just natural for him to be riding all the time. We'd had a lot of rain that spring, and the The block gate was set, but the dirt was washed out from under it, so the yearling was able to go under the block gate and go back down the alleyway to the east, uh, about a half a mile, isn't it, or so. And none of the other block gates were set, and, uh, but basically there was two cowboys there talking to him before they went to a water break, and uh, the last they saw he was going over the hill. You couldn't see over the top of the hill, and everything looked normal. Now Brandon was coming from that direction and he was against this left side of the, the rail all the way down this alley. As I mentioned, he was just a couple feet from the rail. And when they got to this little bend right here, the horse veered to the left and followed the rail across. And was actually coming across through here where the, the stride showed. And then the horse hit right in here and uh, uh, Brandon was found by the other two cowboys on this side of the rail. Ten minutes later, they still hadn't seen him, so they went looking for him. And, uh, that's when we found him at the other end, uh, in critical condition. When I got out of the bathroom, the house phone was ringing again, and it was Matt telling me that they've been trying to get a hold of me. Brandon was in a ba bad accident, and I had to meet um, meet him at ER. They were sending him in an ambulance to ER, so I'd have to go to the hospital. And I lived 10 miles outside of town, so it seemed to take me forever to get back to town to the hospital. That's, um, and I knew it wasn't good when I got to the hospital because um, the pastor of the hospital and the head ER nurse were waiting for me at the door, so I knew it was something really serious. La combinación de varios factores dio como resultado el accidente de Brandon, de los cuales todos pudieron ser prevenidos. El día del accidente, Brandon escogió a un caballo que no estaba acostumbrado a trabajar en las granjas de engorde. If that was part of the reason for his accident was riding a young horse that wasn't experienced enough and I wish he would have taken his own advice um, by, you know, waiting a while until that horse was more experienced before taking him to the feedlot. A su vez, Brandon utilizó un freno de baja calidad en su caballo, lo cual redujo considerablemente el control sobre el animal. Uh, basically, the horse was approved with a bit in its mouth and that day he had tried a new 
type of headgear on it that was real light and we don't that could have been a contributing factor to not the horse not stopping. Como fue mencionado anteriormente, la lluvia había removido la tierra, permitiendo que el ternero escapase por debajo de la puerta de seguridad. Finalmente, perseguir a un animal después de que ha escapado ha siempre sido considerado como una práctica insegura y peligrosa. It wasn't because of lack of skills or experience. I mean, he, even if there, you could see a wreck or a storm coming, he was the kind of hand that would be able to come out of it. You know, he, he had, he did. I, the head cowboy scenario is right. That's what I, I saw him and I had told him many times that he had all the potential in the world. He thought about going back to school and, you know, and we, I encouraged him to do it because he had the potential to be a head cowboy manager someday. So that, yeah, he was the least likely one that, you would, think, you know, that would be missing some skill that would let, allow this to happen. Right. And it, then it does infect all your, not infect, affect all your employees because, uh, you know, I don't know if it's directly uh, correlated to Brandon's death, but uh, we basically have nobody on our cowboy crew anymore that was here at that time. And it's a year and a week later. Yeah, a year and a week later. Uh, I know I would I know of two that probably are definitely had a lot to do with it. Uh, it took them five or six months, but never they never did get past that accident. So one one aspect of this uh, um, accident that I'll never forget was as I was leaving the feed yard in my pickup. I noticed that uh, one of the cowboys that was the first on the accident scene was um, sitting on his horse next to one of the pens. He wasn't going anywhere or doing anything. He just had a long stare gaze on his face. And as he was looking out over the yard, um, I knew it didn't seem quite right. And I pulled up next to him and rolled down my window and I asked him, I said, are you okay? And he didn't answer. And I asked him again, I said, are you okay? And his only response was, I should have said something. I saw him using that light headgear and I should have said something. And the reality was he was eaten up with guilt. He felt like he should have been able to do something to prevent this accident. And the fact of the matter is that's, uh, that's not the only thing that caused this accident. It was one factor, but at the same time, that's something that this cowboy is going to have to live with for the rest of his life. And it shouldn't have to, shouldn't have to be. If he could do it over again, he would have said something. I think just not having him around's been hard, especially with our little boy. Um, just because he he always wanted that little boy and he had him and one of the things he always told me was he couldn't wait till he was old enough to start playing sports with him. And now Cade's getting to the age where he's wanting to play sports and it just breaks my heart that his dad's not around to experience that with him. So just raising a son by myself, knowing that he had a wonderful dad that's not able there to share his life with him is probably the hardest part. Um, I just hope that through my experience of losing um, my husband, my somebody that was dear to me, that. Um, It'll open the eyes of other cowboys and make you realize that it can happen to anybody. Um, that just because you may be experienced or confident in your running abilities, anything's possible. Um, so I hope that down the road, this will help prevent another cowboy from a serious injury or even death.